Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. Uh, this is the Earth's Interior Series. The Earth's Core uh, is our focus today on this video, and we're looking at the outer core. Now, if we take a little quick um, look at our Earth's layers, um, so I'm going to draw the layers right here. We've got the crust, lithosphere, xenosphere, mesosphere. So, so I'll label that crust, lithosphere, xenosphere, mesosphere. And then we get, this is around a depth of about 2,900 kilometers. And we have this being pretty much the chemical general mantle. We know that the mesosphere is the lower mantle. Asthenosphere is the weak layer between different transition zones. We know that up here is the moho, which is the crust of the sphere boundary. And we know that this. These two layers here make up our tectonic plate. And we have a division of the upper mantle and lower mantle. So we have those things already in place, right? Different videos discussing the different layers. And then we get to the core mantle boundary, which is a special area. There's a transition zone as well right here. And it's the same over here, right? So there's different... Uh, fluctuations in the speed of the seismic waves. Again, we differentiate the layers based on the seismic wave uh, speed or velocity and how they change. They slow down, speed up, and we call these discontinuities. And there's a big one at about 2,900 kilometers down, uh, which was found by Gutenberg in 1914, German scientist. And uh, basically analyzing these seismic waves, he saw that going through the mantle, the lower mantle and the mesosphere, there was an increase to around 13.5 kilometers per second. And then as it went over this, this uh, depth of 2,900 kilometers, what he found was this velocity of the P wave actually dropped down to around eight kilometers per second in this area below the lower mantle. So there was a 40% reduction or decrease in speed. And obviously that was pretty, uh, pretty obvious from the, the results, the data. And they could deduce that there was some sort of change of composition, change of layer, change of conditions or environment that happened below 2,900 kilometers and going down to a possible 6,371, which is the center of the Earth or the radius of the Earth. So there was something different. So he basically identified where you have the start of Earth's core, which is chemically and physically a different area to the mantle and the crust. So he also found that the velocity of the S waves or shear waves, when they went through the mesosphere, even though they're a lot slower than the P waves, they actually were, were blocked or stopped or inhibited to go any deeper than 2,900 kilometers. So combined with the, the decrease of the P wave velocity and the complete destruction or continuation of the shear wave, the S wave, he deduced that there was a definite change in material in which these waves are going through. And from that, we deduced that this area is molten. And it goes down to a possible 5,100 kilometers, where again, we saw or see a different um, discontinuity of the seismic waves. In addition to that, he also found that the, at the depth of 5,100 kilometers, these P waves that went through into this layer, this molten layer of the core that has been discovered, were going down to around 10.5 kilometers per second. So not the same kind of speed or faster speed as in the, lo the lower uh, mantle mesosphere, but still an increase from the core mantle boundary. So this 
kind of led us to. This led us to really look at the outer core in much more detail, knowing that it's A, there, and B, that it is most certainly molten material um, of liquid, you know, liquid molten material. So what it's made of, its density and characteristics, and how was it liquid and at, at such a depth with such high pressures? So going from like the characteristics, we discussed that the geotherm shows that the uh, increase in temperature goes increase of depth. Now depth goes from 2,900 um, to around 5,100. And you have this increase in temperature down to about 5,000 at the outer core, inner core boundary. So in terms of density, you're looking at extreme pressures creating a density of 9.9 .9 grams per centimeter cubed up to a possible 12.2 at the lower section of the outer core. So immense densities, and that would also come with the existence of immense pressures. Now we know that as again with temperature and the geotherm, the deeper you go, the more rock is above your above it and creating more pressure. So you're looking at a, a pressure range of 19 up to around 41 million PSI. So insane pressures, really high densities, extreme temperatures at this depth. And don't forget, the entire size of the core is the size of Mars. So this is not a small part of the Earth. This is a very large uh, machine working with under under pretty much extreme conditions. Now, the composition is intriguing. The composition is mostly iron, which is around about eighty percent, with nickel around five percent. And you also have sulfur around, you know, twelve percent, and you also have some trace gas, uh, trace elements like oxygen, potassium that make up a small amount of the outer core. Now, iron and nickel are our metallic, so really it's an iron alloy, a molten iron alloy, and obviously you know dense elements heavy elements and the sulfur's also kind of core cool because scientists believe that the sulfur actually acts to lower the melting temperature of the outer core so even though it's under insane pressures the presence of sulfur allows this area to melt and go above the liquidus line, creating a full molten environment. And the spin of the Earth around the axis also allows this liquid layer to move and circulate, which is also awesome. So imagine, you know, millions and millions of tons of molten iron and rock just basically circulating around the uh, the inner core. Amazing. So how do we know that it's dense? How do we know that it's primarily an iron-based composition? Well, on the surface, we can do studies to recreate these pressures, recreate these conditions, and see how these, these elements and, 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 and uh, you know, minerals act under these pressures. And also we can look at, you know, going back to the Earth's history is how the Earth was formed. And we look at meteorites and their composition. So anything that really hits our planet uh, in terms of meteorites is going to be studied for its composition. And what they found was that these meteorites were made, mostly made of iron and some nickel. And 
they deduce from that that the rocky bodies and the meteorites that were flying around at the time when the Earth was just forming 4.6 billion years ago, these rocky bodies were colliding, sticking to each other through mass and gravity, and creating the first kind of like uh, terrestrial planets closest to the sun. And the combination of all these elements and minerals um, kind of came together, and the heavier elements, the iron, the nickel, are going to sink towards the bottom or towards the center of gravity where the most mass is. And based on other planets and stars, especially our sun, and meteorites, we deduce that you know our planet has a very uh, very dense, heavy core made of mostly iron and nickel. Now, also the average density for the Earth is around 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, I mentioned before that our density in the outer core is 9.9 to 12.2 and in the inner core it's even higher up to even 13.5 or 14 grams per centimeter cube so insanely dense however the average is 5.5 now the mantle is the largest by volume 85 percent volume yet yeah, it's it's around three to five grams per centimeter cubed that's the mantle so how would the average be higher than that if the mantle is the majority volume well the average is pushed up higher to 5.5 because our core is so dense so heavy and it's composed of the heavier elements which is iron and nickel so all the lighter elements the the uh, the oxygen the silicon the aluminum calcium the you know some mostly potassium even magnesium they're going to be more towards the surface which we know in silicate minerals in the upper mantle and the lower we go towards the core you're getting increased heavier elements and increased density um, which is shown by the average so these calculations give us a good idea of what the outer core and inner core are composed of and the fact that the velocity of the p waves and even the P wave shadow zone, which is created because of this molten region around the uh, inner core, refracting uh, and, and bending the P waves through the layer, creating an area called the shadow zone where between 105 degrees and 140 degrees on that part of the Earth, they cannot feel any P wave from the earthquake. And that was caused by the molten liquid. Um, outer core deflecting or refracting the P wave going through it. So we have all this information, and the outer core is a fantastic part of the Earth's interior, and it leads to other uh, specialty um, characteristics that it does. And we'll get onto that in further videos. So, you, guys, thank you so much. If you like the video, please subscribe, leave a comment, and um, please hope you enjoy other videos in this Earth's interior series.